Hello there, Jose Rodriguez here. The other day we were out with Nathan and we decided to go to a local small historic museum in our area. And there in one of the big rooms was several walls displaying some prints and they were framed 16 by 20s. The description said that they were created via an archival process course all that means is that they were probably printed with a large format Epson or Canon printer using pigment inks that's all that means and uh, on good acid free paper maybe the framing is also acid free that's all that means anyway basically the images were composites from newspaper images um, texts all sorts of things and it was kind of a political statement about the local uh, urban displacement of certain groups of people. And of course, I didn't want to get into the political side of it, so I just looked at it until I realized that, wait a minute, these things are for sale. And it says unframed print, $500 a piece. Well, I thought, Lordy, first of all, these images would only appeal to a very narrow group of people. And to think that you were gonna sell a 16 by 20 for $500, I know better. I know they were printed in a common, you know, uh, 17 inch wide, possibly or larger pigment printer, big deal. And possibly printed on some good paper, but well, you know, still not $500. So let's talk about selling your prints. Now, I'm not a huge print seller. I have more prints that I know what to do with. Yeah, if I was putting them out on um, display at various galleries, I may sell a few here and there. But a lot of them are of a personal nature, so they would not appeal to a regular person looking at, you know, for prints to buy. Well, let's just cover how you would go about to figure out what should I charge for one of my prints? Okay. And that runs a pretty big gamut of uh, possibilities. So let's just look at a few of my prints here. I just pulled these out of uh, one of my big piles of prints. I did a wedding years ago. Basically, um, a good friend of ours, you've seen that image. In fact, I'm going to show it to you a little bit later. But they had what I think this is a, bent a Bentley as a prop, they brought the bride in to this Italian villa, riding in this Bentley. Now this is the harpist, and she's also one of the teachers at our local school a while back. She married this guy, and they were not part of the wedding party. Basically, she was a performer. He was just an attendee, and I said, hey, let's take a picture by the Bentley, and you can throw kisses at each other. So I did that. Well, guess what? They bought this print from me. And they had it framed and it's hanging on their wall. Now, how do I price this? Well, many ways. You have some basic costs that you just cannot get away from. And then the rest is whatever you think your valuable time is worth. And of course, the object itself has intrinsic value, I guess, to the person buying it. But the net cost would be about $4 for a sheet of this paper. Okay, I won't say what it is. It is a matte OBA free paper, fine art, works beautifully with a pigment printer. So this is a pigment print. It could have been a 3800, a 3880, an R3000, whatever. It is 13-inch wide. So you would take the cost of your inks. In other words, remember, it takes about 1 to 2 ml. I'll be really generous here. Of total ink to print a letter size print, edge to edge. So you would do your computation, figure out what your cost per ml is. 
and this particular image has a lot of dark tones so maybe it'll take 2.5 ml to print an equivalent letter size of this particular image well this is bigger than letter size so you would have to measure that figure out your square inches do the math and figure out your ink cost but that's not all remember you have maintenance costs every time a printer runs a cleaning cycle it's going to waste a couple of ml per cartridge so you have to throw that in now an ml of ink from Epson OEM may cost you I don't know a dollar thirty-five so it's say it takes two ml that would be two dollars and seventy cents worth of ink what if you did a couple of test prints you have to take that into consideration as well throw an extra ml in the mix per print because that may take care of the maintenance that occasionally occurs or you may have to perform so yeah figure out your cost per ml to print a particular size print using a particular set of inks whether it's OEM or God forbid third party if you're selling you need to use OEM forget about third party if you use third party you have to let the customer know and then you have to actually bring down the price I mean come on let's get serious here so in this case I sold a 16 by 20 print in this configuration with wide enough borders for a signature and a date and they framed it I only charged them $50 because they were friends so that means that say if my net cost for the print was $10 then I thought my time would be worth I don't know $25 and the rest is just intrinsic value added to the print because it is important to them some other person would not want that print whatsoever why they don't know who the people are so here is the actual wedding party of that particular wedding and again I did the same thing I printed a larger print this is just a test print that I did on the P800 when I first installed it and you can see how beautiful it turned out these blues are actually the real blues of the dress those are very difficult to reproduce on print again I figured out the square inches I knew what my ink cost per ml was and I just did a calculation to figure out how much ink did it take how many pennies worth of ink did it take to print this size image the rest of it is then the paper cost if I did not do any test printing if I just edited it hit print and I got a perfect result then that's it but often you have to take any kind of testing into consideration you will add a bit of cost per print to include all of that necessary testing to arrive at a certain result again another personal image this will be very valuable to them not to anyone else so this has intrinsic value only to them so if my cost plus my time is say thirty dollars and I tell them sixty dollars they'll be glad to pay sixty dollars for that print again not five hundred dollars that's ridiculous you know sometimes people just get a little bit um, their ego gets in the way now we're going to get into some images that are more uh, impersonal and images that will be very suitable for offices hallways and buildings you know businesses that type of thing Walter Reed Army Medical Center used to be the Bethesda Naval Center all of their walls are just adorned by large large prints they look like they were originally done from film and they drive me nuts because a lot of them are a little bit crooked it's like gosh it would only take you seconds to fix that but anyway and again they're not a type of image that will appeal to just one person it appeals to the mass so this is a type of image that you if you want to sell to that type of genre if you want to sell to that type of customer office dental offices uh, medical officers law offices commercial buildings then you have to include a set of neutral images in your portfolio so that they can see what you are able to produce 
So here's a nice image that would look good anywhere. Again, this was printed on Palo Duro, beautiful paper. And this will last forever, literally. Even unprotected, it is that good. And of course, with good pigment OEM inks, this will last forever. The texture is so gorgeous, I would not want to put this under glass, even though under glass is always better. But here's an example of that. Watercolor paper, uncoated. This is the Cash Town Inn in Gettysburg, north of Gettysburg in the town of Cash Town. Signed, ready to go. They would put that on their wall. In fact, they have. So there you go. This is something that they will not only buy, but also people who visit the area may want to buy this. And it is a painterly rendition of that image. Again, watercolor paper, painterly rendition of one of the cafes in Annapolis in Maryland, the capital of Maryland. This looks like France to me. Again, they now have this picture on their wall. They bought it from me. It's a field in Gettysburg. Again, this is the type of thing that is non-personal. People may like to have this in their home. In fact, my daughter's in-laws have lots of prints on their walls that they have purchased from other people. So far, they only have a few from me. I just give a give those away to them. Of course, I will not charge them. Here's some leaves. Again, painterly effect. You see, that's not a personal type image. So you have to reach out to the right customer. Here's the State House in Annapolis. Done on fine. This is San Gabriel paper. Again, that will last forever. Here's another one. This will sell. This would be perfect for a doctor's office, a dental office, any kind of a law office even. And you can make this, you know, 20 by 30, charge $300, $400 for it. And uh, they would have to pay for the framing. This will just be for the printing process. Again. Pictorial photographs go very well in offices, that type of environment, the hallways between offices in an office building. All broken down windmill. Some of these are not mine. I'm not gonna claim that they are mine, but I'm just giving you examples of what you could produce for sale to that type of uh, customer. Half of an orange falling through water and captured with a strobe light. That's a beautiful high key subject that could print really large. Here's a beautiful sunset telephoto lens does magic and again this could be anywhere you don't have to travel the world to capture something like this you know a lot of it is done with post-processing there goes the secret beautiful field incredible storm coming you can just see the rain just pouring down there best to get the heck out of dodge as they say again this will be a beautiful huge mural at an office anywhere in the world. Same thing here, nice graphic looking picture. It almost looks black and white, but it's actually full color. It just has no color. The chili peppers. Flowers, landscapes, um, that type of subject. Graphic things fits perfectly for the office building type environment. Anything personal will be only valuable to that person. Even something like this. This is my grandson, my son. 
They're having their own little private time in the woods. See, you don't see the faces. So this could be a beautiful picture, say, in a pediatric office for a pediatric doctor. Okay? So that should give you some ideas. Again, paper cost, and you need to do some math and figure out your ink costs, okay? Including testing and including those pesky maintenance cycles, cleaning cycles that you may have to perform once in a while, especially if you don't print often, which you should be doing anyway. So that is it. Paper cost, ink cost, and then your time, and then you could tack on intrinsic value to the print. In other words, is this work of art that you created worth something extra besides your time, your ink costs, your maintenance costs, okay? And paper, of course. And of course, you have to take into account the initial investment of the printer. I forgot to throw that into the mix. That is very important because several years down the road, you may have to spend another two grand on a brand new printer. So you have to take that into account. And um, what is it, amortization? Yes, something like that. Anyway, I'm not a CPA, so that is it. With that little bit of information, you should be able to figure out a good pricing strategy for your work if you decide to start selling. All right, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, happy printing and hopefully happy selling of your prints. Bye-bye.